Welcome to Resting Palms. Tonight I have a very special guest, a man who needs no introduction to Chris Archer. It's an honor to have you on my channel today. Would you be kind enough to do what you do best and announce yourself for the fans, please? Well, of course, Keaton. I mean, who better to announce than the entertainer himself, Chris Mercer? So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this exclusive interview today. I am Mr. Entertainer, the former MC, CM, welcoming you today, um, and your host for this evening, um, Keaton. Um, I will be going in depth into the most entertaining career in all of professional wrestling. Can you remember our dance off with you and the referee when we were the dudes? Oh, of course, Keaton. I mean, um, it's actually one of my, I would say, probably one of the top highlights of my career so far. Um, to be in there with such um, a skilled dancer, I mean, um, why, why would that not be a, a key moment in my career? Um, and it was also very special as well because that was actually the first. Not only the first that you um, had, I think, went to, but also the first that we got recorded. So the first time that we really kind of got ourselves out there um, as a brand in MXG. Um, and it was a really good moment because obviously um, I got to beat Joe in the end because of your your key uh, dancing skills. Um, and <laughs> so guys, one more time, was it Joe? Boo. Boo. Or was it the dudes? Yeah. We were able to beat Joe, so to be honest, probably one of the, the funnest times I've had so far in LXG, um, and, and just a really memorable moment. As you know, I've loved wrestling since way back when I was single figures. What are your first memories of wrestling? I started to kind of get into wrestling. It was always kind of in the background, but one of the things that I really remember was watching it. It's a show that isn't on um, Sky anymore, but it was called the, the Don't Know Me Experience. And as a kid, we didn't have um, Sky Sports, so me and my brother would sit down every Sunday um, and sit uh, Sunday afternoon and watch the Don't Know Me Experience, which was like a, a highlight show of all the things going on and going to meet me. Um, I think my first big memorable moment was the build up to WrestleMania 23. So that would have been 2007. Yeah, but 2007. So I remember getting really, really excited for the Royal Rumble. Um, and then that was when um, Undertaker and Shawn Michaels were the last two in the Royal Rumble that year. And Undertaker went on to win. And then when the World Heavy title off Batista at WrestleMania. So that was sort of, that was the first time I, I really kind of got so, so excited. And then that moment, of course, to get Sky Sports. Um, and then we did get Sky Sports, and then the first match that I ever actually watched was the SmackDown taping, and it was, I think, Jimmy Wang Yang versus um, Chavo Guerrero on SmackDown, so that was kind of, it was whenever I first really started getting into prof or professional wrestling, I was a really big fan, so I was going to say, by 2007, so I would have been about P7 at the time. Who were your favourite wrestlers back then? Oh, well, I mean, the one that definitely stands out is uh, jumping in my head right now with have been Jeff Hardy, I mean, you know, high flyer, risk taker, charismatic. charismatic, you know, um, something that I, you know, try and be um, someone that's quite, you know, out there and, and, and different and, and a, bit, a bit odd, but that's the fun of it, you know, and the likes of the, you know, the colourful wrist or armbands and all that sort of stuff, all the bits of colour and things, that, that was something that really, really stood out to me. Um, him, and then I also watched TNA at the time as well, so Sting was a, a big, um, a big hero of mine. Again, something that really stood out, you know, the face paint, um, the bright colours, something that really, for me, is what wrestling's all about, you know, the over-the-top bright colours and, and, and the whole magnificence of what professional wrestling can be. John Cena was massive as well, and, um, and, and even before then, probably the person that everyone, kind of, even if they're not associated with wrestling, knows would have been Hulk Hogan. You know, they, they, you can't, you can't uh, forget the, the red and yellow um, knee pad and, and, and pants and, and the boots. You know, that really, that character really, really stood out to me as well. How did you get into NXT wrestling? Um, well, how I got into NXT wrestling, actually, um, I don't know if you've heard of a thing called the pandemic, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah. I think we all have uh, 
I'm not a pro sure of it at this point, but um, I've always really, really wanted to follow um, in professional wrestling actually do it rather than just watch it. Uh, and I'd always toyed with it for, for so, so long. Um, and then I just kind of saw a post one day um, of NXG, um, and all I did was, was fire them a message. I think it was January last year. Um, and they said, look, I was during one of the lockdowns, and they said, look, um, we're going to have uh, an open day. I think it was the, you know, whenever lockdown finished. So it was about April, May time. Um, so I went down and just really, really loved it. Um, and from there, just kind of stayed along and, and they've had me ever since, which has been an absolute pleasure. What did you like, do for an action to pick you? To pick, the, to pick me to be on the shows? Yeah, so um, obviously being professional wrestling, you have to do a lot of training. There's a lot of training that goes into it. Um, and, you know, I, I really, I wanted to, you know, obviously I feel like I'm a very good wrestler, but at the time I really wanted to kind of hone my skills in a wee bit. Um, and I've always loved um, presenting and announcing. I used to do that in my school plays and the talent shows and all that sort of stuff. Um, so one day I just said, look, this is something that I want to do. Um, in the meantime, um, it's something that I'm really, really passionate about. It's something I really, really enjoy. And um, our coach, Nathan, um, handed me the mic one day uh, in class and said, look, we're going to do a couple um, matches here um, and interviews. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Live at the Dojo. Really, uh, baptism by fire, so I really kind of just got some fun in there. Um, did a couple interviews, did a couple um, announcements, and they were very impressed. Um, and it just it went from there. And then, um, yes, here we are now. I'm now the entertainer. Um, so yeah, that's how I kind of got, got in and, and started MXG. My first experience of local wrestling in Northern Ireland was awesome. It was NXT's Roar's War. You are the ringmaster and entertainer. Unfortunately, I missed the show during um, COVID. You went from being the much-loved entertainer to becoming the unpopular heat wrestler. What happened that night between you and the referee, Jolene? Well, actually, um, to, to actually explain that story, Keaton, um, we actually have to go right back to the first ever show that we had. So that was that was one before um, Raw's War. Um, so this story has now turned into one of the hottest storylines in all professional wrestling in Northern Ireland. Um, and basically what it started out as was um, we had a rumble. My number was called out and my name was called out. Um, and then after that, Joe's name was, was called out and he also entered the rumble. Um, and it actually came to my aid, which I thought, so I thought we were on good terms. And then unfortunately, Joe decided to throw me out of that rumble um, and eliminate me. So he actually started um, what um, became a bit of a feud. Um, obviously, then the next show we had um, a bit of a team up, you and I as the dudes, and we had a dance battle. Um, and, and then the following show was the, uh, the I think it was the Monsters Brawl Battle Royal. So in that, um, I managed to go even up and recover and um, dress up in costume as I don't know if you've heard of the character Michael Myers. No. No, he's a scary uh, horror character. So I was in disguise and I then eliminated Joe from that battle royal and then revealed um, myself. Um, and that obviously didn't go down very well with Joe. Um, so in actual fact, um, I never ever uh, turned on the fan. I actually very much appreciate every fan that I have. Um, all I want to do is put on the best performance possible and entertain everyone. But uh, the fans definitely were on Joe's side that evening, and that set up um, then 
the following show. So, um, yeah, it's kind of a, a rivalry that um, just kind of exploded um, over the course of, of three shows. Then, obviously, Joe decided to try and get me and beat me into a wrestling match, and I was able to outsmart him whenever he went against JDP. Um, and then we finally had our, our wrestling match the following show. Um, so, you know, it was never me. I am just absolutely humbled to have any sort of fans. I'm trying to be the ultimate entertainer, but it was the fans that uh, unfortunately decided to turn on me. So it is what it is, you know, um, and you just have to keep going and, and, and move forward. Is it tough having the fans being you now? Continue and troll me all day long. I'll continue being 
the ultimate entertainer, the Mr. Main Inventor, and to be honest, the best wrestler Northern Ireland has ever seen. If you could put a message out to any of them, Joes, what would you say? I would say, I think those Joes need to focus more on their own successes and their own accomplishments than trying to belittle the absolute entertainer, the MC, well, the former MC, CM, and to be honest, if they really, really want to be my super fan, they can go on and they can start buying my merchandise because in this industry, you need to make a wee bit of money, Keaton. So if you're going to spend that much time, you might as well represent all my brand. So that's my message to all the Jones of the world. I have tickets for the next NXT show and Brandless. Will you be wrestling at that one? Well, I think there's a lot of things that we need to wrap up in the next show, you know, Keaton. Um, unfortunately, as you know, um, I have been removed from my esteemed position as a announcer. So I have a lot of things that I need to get off my chest. There's a lot of things that I need to talk about. And from what I'm being told by management is that I have to hand my microphone back. So I will not be entering Adrenaline as an announcer. I will be entering as a wrestler. So at this point in time, that is all I can say to you. Um, what I would say is you need to go to the show and you need to witness the most entertaining event of the year. I will. I will. I look forward to it. You have some great moves. How often do you train? Well, thank you very much. Um, yes, so I've tried out tried some new stuff um, at the last show. Um, I train at the moment, so I train with NXT in terms of wrestling wise, um, two times a week. Um, but to get into shape and to um, build upon my wrestling ability, I've also trained outside of NXT as well. Um, I would be a gym goer. So I would train probably, especially leading up to that show, about four to five times a week. Have you ever been injured or witnessed about wrestling injury? Oh, um, well, I have had some some injuries, um, especially at the start of, of my journey in professional wrestling. Um, as you know, uh, wrestling isn't for the faint of heart. There's a lot of slams, there's a lot of impact, and there's a lot of uh, dangerous moves that go on. Um, so early on, I had, you know, I had some kind of nagging injuries on my shoulders um, and one on my neck for a while there. Um, thankfully, they've it kind of went away so I haven't had anything that's really been something that's kept me out of professional wrestling for very long um, fingers crossed touch wood and all that sort of stuff um, that um, I can continue on that road um, and I actually have been fortunate enough not to see any um, horrible injuries in person um, I do know of a few uh, I mean one that really really I think it was stand up for all wrestling fans um, is um, when Psycho Sid was performing for WCW um, if you go back and, and watch that on YouTube, he um, tried to do a big boot um, style move off the middle rope and yeah, um, landed on his ankle, landed on his way in his ankle and I think that's, a, that's a, one of those injuries that really shows that um, professional wrestling can go wrong at any moment and it's a, it's a very serious sport um, and as such needs to be, um, needs to be appreciated for the, the risk that every performer takes getting into that ring. How do you like wrestling? Everyone has their kind of bucket list of people that they, they want to wrestle, um, first and foremost, and also places that they might want to go. Um, I mean, one, one of the people, for example, that was on my list was um, a wrestler called Steve Savage. He wrestled for Titanic before. Um, he was actually on the LDN show um, at the weekend there, so I actually got to take one of those, those off the list, um, and I got to get into the ring and wrestle with him. Um, which was a great honour and privilege, um, and was um, very, 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 very humbling for me, and, 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 and quite a, a real reflective moment. You know, it was something that I kind of thought, you know what, actually, it's mad that I actually am able to be a wrestler. It's, you know, it's, it's crazy that this dream has actually come true and I've made it a reality. Um, I mean, everyone always sets their goals very, very high. I mean, it would be silly for me not to say that I wouldn't love to go to WWE someday in, in some capacity 
Um, I am an all-round entertainer, so unlike a lot of other people, my abilities don't just lie in wrestling. Um, I could easily be an announcer or a commentator um, or any sort of uh, role like that within the company as well. So, I mean, any of those, I would be happy to do it. Um, so I think that, that would mean that would be the top goal. And then obviously there's, there's people on the list that I would love to wrestle um, in between that as well. Do, do you know if Paul Tracy is okay? Paul Tracy, yes, I can confirm that he is feeling good. Um, and as far as I believe that um, our seminar is still going ahead, um, and I'm very much excited for it. It's going to be actually after our um, adrenaline um, show. Um, so it's going to be uh, straight after that on the following day. So um, yes, very, very excited about that. He is in good health and um, uh, I'm very, very excited to be a part of that seminar. Obviously, he's a very, very experienced individual um, and an absolute legend in the world of professional wrestling. So yes, very, very excited for that seminar. I have a Canadian pal who is a fabulous YouTuber. Would you be kind enough to give him a Chris Mercer style? Shout out, please. It is me, the MC, CM, the all round entertainer, the man who wrestles, announces, and refs. The man that can do it all. And um, today, I have actually a special mention, a special shout out to give to Jesse Jack Hammer and his show, The One Minute Wrestler. So here's from me to you, Jesse Jack Hammer, that from one entertainer to another. I hope you're keeping well, and hopefully I will get talking to you maybe one day if you want to interview an absolute entertainer in the name of Chris Mercer. Please tell us one wrestling secret from behind the scenes. Ooh, I'll see you a good one I can give you. Mm-hmm. Now, well, here's actually one. So, some people may or may not know this, probably don't know this, but um, do you know the wrestler Dee Dee Crooks? Yes. Yes, well, me and Dee Dee Crooks actually go way, way back, way before uh, the doors of NXT opened. Um, we actually both went to secondary school together. Um, Dee Dee Crooks is slightly younger than me. I'm not giving away the age, of, um, but he is slightly younger than me. Um, and we were actually uh, friends before um, uh, before our days in professional wrestling. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah I saw that your icon with DD Crook you had before in NXT. That was, yeah, yeah. Thank you for taking the time, the time out to speak to me again. If you like what you have heard, please smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. So, back for now.